Big Daddy here. And today we're going to take a look at Antergos KDE. So, let's jump right in. So, let's see what we got. All right, and because I have dual monitors, it always pops over there on that screen until I fix it later. Um, we have Antergos, and it's running Plasma 5.8.5, which is the latest version. Just came out a few days ago. Uh, the frameworks is 5.29. QT is 5.7.1. And the kernel is 4.8.13. So it's a late, one of the latest kernels. It did give you the option in the install process to install the, the LTS kernel, but I chose not to. So here is my hardware. Intel i7-2600, which is an older i7, 3.4. And it has 16 gigabytes of RAM. And I am running on a 500 gigabyte solid state. So, going back to memory, whoa, let's see if we what we got for HTOP. So, right now it's at 1.68 RAM. But before you get excited about that, that is nowhere near, I'm nowhere near a cold boot. And this has progressively gone up as I've been running the machine, uh, running OBS, opening programs, and stuff like that. So I think the cold boot was around 800, somewhere in that area. So not too bad for a KDE version. I think some of them are a little bit less. I think actually Neon was a little bit less than that, but not bad. All right, so the menu, you have the standard um, application launcher by default in KDE. So this is not my favorite menu. So I was actually going to try the application dashboard. So, but when I went in here, it's not installed. So I will install that. But for right now, you, by default, you have the launcher and you have the menu, which is the, which is probably the one that I prefer. Um, it's it's nice, easy, and quick compared to between the two. This is the one I prefer. All right, so um, four programs. Uh, I did install OBS and I did install HTOP because they weren't on there. Uh, for education, I mean, it, pretty much LibreOffice. I install, I chose to install LibreOffice as well because in the install process, they give you a basically a box with checkboxes in it. And it gives you all kinds of options like if you want to enable the AUR, uh, do you want to install the firewall, the GUFW firewall? Do you want to install Firefox? Do you want to install Flash? All these options. And I chose to install quite a few of them, so otherwise they wouldn't be here. By default, it's a pretty vanilla installation as far as programs are concerned. So in games, I chose to install Play on Linux and Steam in that, so they would not be here. Under graphics, you got Ocular for PDF viewing, and you got Gwenview for pictures. Under internet, I chose to install Firefox, so that wouldn't be there. And I just now, right before I started here, installed Telegram. Um, but you don't have an email client, so Kmail is not installed, or, and, or nor any other ones. So if you use web-based, that's great. Um, but I usually install Thunderbird. So under multimedia, you got Clementine as your music player, and you have VLC for videos. Office, as I said, I chose to install LibreOffice. Uh, I chose to install the firewall configuration. Um, it does have Paymac installed rather than Octopi. Octopi is the package manager for Arch systems that's installed by default in Manjaro systems, which is what I was on previously. And I really didn't care for it at all. Uh, I think Paymac has it way over Octopi. So I am, was glad to see Paymac installed here. Uh, for utilities, you got Arc, the calculator, Kate, which I think one of the other, and I can't remember which one it was, used Kwrite instead of Kate. I'm not sure what the difference is or or why which one is better. But so there you have it. And that's the menu and the basic panel on the bottom. Um, you have your 
most the home drives you have PayMac there, but I started that, so that's normally it's not there as soon as you start up. Bluetooth, your internet connections, clipboard, volume, and the hidden entries on the system tray. Your clock and your hamburger menu. Desktop is the vanilla wallpaper. So all in all, I have not been using it for very long. And I will start to customize it, and I think I'll actually record me customizing it, but I haven't had any problems as of yet, which I can't say the same for Manjaro, which I was hoping that Manjaro was going to work out really good, but uh, there was a few issues. So as of right now, it is running smooth. And it's a, van like I said, it's a vanilla installation with programs, but they do add certain little touches like for example the and I keep mentioning it but I the root actions menu not only do they add the root actions menu but they add quite a few options in the root actions menu like open in terminal open in file manager um, as you see I mean you can read I'm not going to read it all for you but one of these is like this one here ownership to active user I use quite often when, like for example, when I install new operating systems, and not that I would ever install more operating systems than there are weeks in a month, but when I do install operating systems, um, my other drives that I have connected to the, com to the computer have all of my files on them. So I have to then go in and basically take ownership of those new drives because once you reinstall, you're not the owner anymore for whatever reason. So I guess it doesn't know that you're the owner of those files. So you have to let it know that you're the owner. And that makes it quite easy to go in, right click on the main folder, ownership to active user, and bam, they're all mine again. So that's a quick look at Antergos KDE. Next, maybe we'll do some customizing. But until then, Big Daddy out.